In the Caspian region, obviously, that is also uh, very, very important. I would like to ask you, first of all, Hans, um, the fourth industrial revolution has been a topic at the World Economic Forum already last year, the year before, three years ago. Um, it's kind of a fancy title, but what does it actually mean? Well, it's, um, um, it's as, as we move away from uh, the previous revolutions, which uh, allowed us to evolve from riding animals to driving cars and mass producing products and so on and and now uh, uh, going into an area where we have a completely new dimension of uh, artificial intelligence of uh, biotechnology and of uh, interoperability of these different technologies that come together that pose um, or that offer a large amount of opportunities but also pose a substantial amount of threats when it comes to particularly artificial intelligence, uh, uh, IoT and so on, and how artificial intelligence is used on IoT platforms and so on. Um, and I think for the Caspian region, it's a fantastic opportunity to accelerate some of the processes that they need to accelerate, which in the past would have taken them decades which can now be accomplished in years. Which uh, we'll get back to in a minute. Uh, Shekeb, where do you see the fourth industrial revolution in the Caspian uh, region? Uh, and what kind of opportunities uh, do you see in specific? Um, well, to say the truth, actually, we are facing currently um, the, uh, for us, the fourth revolution actually already started. It's not something, a buzzword that we are talking about and we say it might come. Um, there is a success story within Switzerland currently that we started with IoT use cases where we partnered with the different uh, industrial key players. For us, uh, we brought the whole industrialization from China back to Switzerland. We are price competitive in manufacturing. For us, the opportunity that we see in the Caspian, uh, Caspian region is that it actually does not make sense to produce long term in China we can bring automatization back to the place where hardware or solutions are needed. That's for us the fourth um, revolution of the industry. That's actually what we are targeting in the Caspian region. Dr. Al-Farhan, um, for Saudi Arabia, where do you see the biggest uh, potential in terms of investments maybe in the greater Caspian region? Thank you. First of all, uh, if you look in Saudi track in this area, we are the fifth station in the fourth industrial revolution. And we, they started in 2017, 16, correct me if I'm wrong. And by 2019, we are in. And in reality, we have smart city like Neom, the coming city, Amela. We're investing almost $1 trillion in these cities. We have the potential in the long term, according to our vision 2030, that 70% uh, of our population beyond 30 years old. So that means we have a great future to achieve a lot. Plus, we are, have the same potential as Caspian region because we all have the most you know, uh, powerful deposit of natural resources. So that means it's not about we're going to go to take loans from banks. We have the wealth. We can do anything we look for in the future. Would you say that uh, oil and gas and smart cities are the key focus areas for Saudi in the Caspian region then? No. This is, this is the biggest misunderstanding to keep play about the Gulf region, for example, or the Caspian region that we rely on oil and gas. We Tell us look, uh, what your plans are. We look forward for all this innovation, technology, we invest in this in order to reduce consumption of oil and gas and use technology to produce more sustainable economy, sustainable environmental, uh, be friendly, all these elements. It's, this is something, if you allow me to say it, it's a dogmatic approach. And that's why if you see our G20 approach, it's an opportunity for 21st century for everyone, not only for Saudi Arabia or for the Caspian. Hans, um, if we look uh, into the future, which specific technologies uh, should be developed in this uh, fourth industrial revolution? Is it blockchain, uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, AI? Where do you see uh, the biggest opportunities? 
Well, I, I wouldn't point out a particular technology, and, and but I would like to point out, as, a, uh, as you mentioned so correctly, I think data is the new, new oil. And uh, uh, you and the region, you have a tremendous opportunity to move from the oil industry into the data industry. But that's where the problem also starts, because in my particular field of interest, which is illicit trade and counterfeiting, anti-counterfeiting, um, and developing technologies that uh, can help curb what today is a $4.2 trillion cost to the global economy. It's about the size of the GDP of Germany. Um, that heavily finances terrorism and criminal activities and remains a main enabler of uh, corruption. These are the issues that we can address and curb very quickly and very efficiently with the use of appropriate technologies that exist today and start generating unprecedented data that can then help us move forward and address these issues proactively. I mean, returning $4.2 trillion into the legitimate economy on a global scale is something that can be achieved, but we're not tackling it correctly yet. And that's something where the region can be very proactive, Saudi as well as the Caspian region, in showing actually mm -hmm. the world that they can do that in a much faster pace than other regions mm -hmm. can. I've lived in the GCC for five years in uh, Dubai and Yemen and Qatar and so on. Um, do you think that it's a GCC you know, issue that uh, you can solve this by yourself or would you like to get more stakeholders involved, uh, work with the UN, other you know, governments around the world to tackle some of these uh, you know, illicit issues? I think if you follow the news in Davos, you can see the first day almost our entire government sit with the Swiss and they have a discussion and all reflect your statement because you cannot act alone. You have to have trusted and successful partners. And I can quote uh, Minister Maurer when he was in Riyadh in FII in uh, October. He said in Switzerland, you have trust and quality. So this is the right partner for example, for us in Saudi Arabia or GCC countries. Sheikh um, do you concretely work on uh, these issues in uh, the Caspian region or what, what kind of projects are you developing there right now? Can you explain and, you know, detail a little bit more? Well, um, we are actually building technology hubs currently or we have already built with uh, South America with North America, with uh, China. So whenever I fly to China, I s fly over the Caspian region and I'm just wondering what is actually below there. So no, we are not doing that, but um, our goal is to play transparent, as uh, my colleague just said. Um, we have to find the right partners in the local markets because the complexity of the systems that we are um, creating with this fourth industrial uh, revolution we cannot handle it alone. We need uh, the right competences in the right fields. So from a human skill point of view, what kind of talents are you looking for? Do they need to have an amazing startup? Do they have to have the best CV, the longest CV in the world? Uh, do they need to have the right connections? You know, if somebody in the room, you know, would like to maybe apply for a job, what are you looking for? Um, well, amazingly, um, I, when, when I came here and was listening to the first presentations, I was just going back in time what we did in the last three years within Switzerland, because currently we are market leader within the IoT field. Um, one of the um, uh, colleagues uh, presenting here, the startup on 3D printing, let's say, we are actually using these technologies here to do fast prototyping, fast proof of concepts within Switzerland. So I wouldn't not go big, I would start small and then scale it up locally. Is it um, so challenging to find local talent because um, there's a lack to foreign capital as well? Um, or do you basically go to those co countries and, and you know employ headhunters or explore the markets yourself or is it at international forums like the WEF or other uh, you know big exhibitions um, technology forums where you look for these talents? Um, 
just in, in order to give you an example, uh, what we did in uh, Ecuador, um, we started to cooperate with uh, our first partner. We started it on a small scale. We organized a small conference on the Chamber of Commerce just to gather some interest. And now we will, so this year we will be organizing with the same partner the biggest LoRa One and IoT conference just to gather more interest. So what we will do is we will focus probably on one partner which has, let's say, most of the synergies. It can also be the national communication provider like we do that here in Switzerland with uh, Swisscom. Um, but the interesting thing is actually um, I hope uh, you ca I mean, you can find me on LinkedIn. Whenever you see a synergy, please contact me. We are playing open and transparent here. You'll be overwhelmed afterwards. <laughs> Hopefully. Hans, yes, please. No, add. Just, uh, just a comment on that because I also lived in Abu Dhabi for nine years. So, right, we might um, have crossed paths already. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and um, I think that there is also a problem of awareness. People don't, I'm not selling Abu Dhabi here or the region, um, but I think there's been a fundamental investments in technology and in hubs to promote technology, and we see Saudi now doing the same also. Um, I would dare to say beyond any other region on the world, the investments that are being made. Uh, today are, are substantial and will, cer will certainly bear the fruits. People do not know very often what it means living in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi. I prefer Abu Dhabi personally and, and I can see that um, I visited from all of these years, I visited Riyadh for the first time this summer. It was a little bit warm but still very pleasant. But it's certainly going in a very similar direction now, which means that you're creating environments where any talent will feel comfortable living there. I finally, just to give an example, I finally convinced a couple with their family of Swiss friends that have never visited to visited the UAE. They went uh, a couple of months ago and they came back and they're still talking about it. So uh, Absolutely, it's, it's all about it's awareness breaking is those also, stereotypes, awareness is also for issue, sure. Yes. Um, and I'm not so worried about the Gulf Arab region when it comes to this digital gap. But when I was in Africa last uh, September, um, we're trying to build an impact hub in Dar es Salaam. And Eastern Africa is kind of off um, site when it comes to you know, startups and uh, investments for young businesses and so on. So I was not just worried about the increasing wealth gap, but also the digital gap. Um, so how can you know certain countries catch up with this? So what kind of advice could you share, for example, Dr. Al Farhan, when it comes to countries that might not be on that uh, you know fast track yet, like Saudi, when it comes to developing those infrastructures Look, that don't uh, have the same access to capital, no, right? No, no. If you're talking about access, as long there is youth, as long there is future and progress and development. So that means regardless, is it wealthy country or poor country? Because the, the youth are the future. Re, uh, you know, it's, they are the real assets. But how can they be the future when there is no money? Yeah, exactly. So then if there is no money, then this is the responsibility of international community to come and support those who are in need. Saudi Arabia, for example, support a lot of countries through a lot of activities, education, in, uh, in structure, uh, healthcare. I'll give you an example. I was posted in Zambia th until th three years ago. And then they find out the most terrible thing is about uh, the mortality in uh, labor, birth, and children and women. So we built an entire huge hospital for the Zambians just to make sure that this is not c to continue to cause atrocity to the country. And I, I don't like to talk about these things because this is something to do with for a humanitarian side. But when you come to investment, future, IT, fourth industrial revolution, this is the real future. Because if you don't equip your young people now with these tools, they will be unemployed in the long term. Then this is where you have the big problem. Uh, Shekep, you're working in the Caspian region. Um, how do you raise funding and how difficult is it? Um, well, maybe I misexpressed myself. We w hopefully will start soon. Um, so how are you raising funding then? Um, well, I would say money alone is not solving all issues. Um, money will solve some of the issues, but uh, we have to surely bring the technology first here. And then since we have, uh, let's say, 
access to a big network in the background, we have to create awareness, as you say nicely, and uh, gather the interest of the international, um, let's say, investors in this region. Um, but you have to start from somewhere. So you cannot just gather a lot of money in this place and hope that something will happen. This is not happening. You mentioned uh, the dangers and the risks um, before Hans. Uh, when it comes to money laundering, illicit uh, money flows and so on, uh, trafficking, um, what are you the most worried about? I think the one thing I'm worried about is that the growth continues. Uh, we're, we're reaching scales today, as I said, we, in 2013, uh, the same organization, which is the ICC, it's a little bit different than, uh, uh, than other organizations. The numbers vary a lot, but uh, in 2013, the economic impact on a global scale of, uh, uh, of counterfeiting alone, not illicit trade, was 1.7 trillion. So this went from 2013 to now 4.2 trillion. I, I like the 2013 number also, the 1.7 trillion, because it's the exact same amount than all defense budgets of the world combined. Now, you mentioned the need to, first of all, the, the fundamental issue for me in the fourth industrial revolution is integrity of data. And how do you protect that data? And how do you generate data that can be trusted and is reliable and is not extrapolated or doesn't come from algorithms? Because if we build in that data into um, artificial intelligence, then we're doomed for life because it will stay there for a very long time. We also have the risk that the individuals that want to become the ethnical gatekeepers of uh, data and data integrity maybe do not have any integrity themselves. So they have a huge challenge there. But to just address quickly the financing issues, I keep coming back to counterfeiting, but you do have 4.2 trillion on the table. That's a lot of money for African countries to stimulate growth, education, uh, uh, to build new technologies. We just need to be creative. And as I always say, people ask me, what technology? I said, forget about the technologies. All the technology is out there. What we need is political will. And once we get that, you can start building a lot of financial resources to cover the inequality that you see today in some of the areas. And talking about finance, uh, I have the pleasure to introduce now Kairat uh, Kalimbetov. He's uh, the governor of the Astana International Financial Center from Kazakhstan. So, um, uh, the topic, uh, yes, let's applaud him. Fantastic. Um, the topic is uh, the fourth industrial revolution in the Caspian region, right? Um, at the Astana Financial <laughs> Center, what are you doing when it comes to the fourth industrial revolution, digitization, new technologies, and so on. How are you basically uh, improving and elevating your financial system to a new high? Um, do you want to pass the microphone? We share. We share on the stage. Thank you very much. It's a great opportunity to share what we are doing uh, in Kazakhstan. I think in a broader context, let's say, the Caspian uh, region, uh, but also like Central Asia, is a landlocked region. We are now struggling yet uh, with the connectivity to build physical connectivity to connect us to the rest of the world. I think in these uh, terms, the recent initiative Belt and Road was uh, very helpful with the idea to connect Chinese market to European, towards uh, Eastern and Western European markets to build this land bridge. Uh, so this is from one side, and I think uh, also, in the context of the upcoming fourth industrial revolution, it's very much important to this region, like to many other regions, not to be left behind. I mean, now we realize that now uh, uh, what is going on now in terms of the moving towards the new technologies is something which is distinct uh, very soon the many countries between each other, many continents between each, each other, if we will not do anything, if we will not prepare it to this. And in these terms, I think, uh, especially in the Central Asia, the Kazakhstan has its own responsibility. We are two-thirds of the Central Asian economy, so we are leading economy, and we, I think, that the most prepared economy for the uh, leapfrog in terms of the, what we see that the new technologies allows to leapfrog to many dimensions. So we have a program so which we call Digital Kazakhstan, so we're trying to prepare like a um, uh, Classically, let's say, to prepare economy, society, to prepare business community, to really to use all of these new tech dimensions. Uh, the breaking news today is that we sign up with the World Economic Forum. 
we uh, uh, we later we intend that this year we will create the uh, affiliate center for the fourth industrial revolution. So the idea we understand that the World Economic F uh, Forum is as a network of the, the such centers uh, in, in India, in China, in San Francisco, just to understand what's going on in different dimensions in terms of AI, blockchain, uh, E-Trade. It's v especially very much important for Kazakhstan with the idea to be uh, connected. And uh, back to the Astana International Financial Center. It so was established in July 2018, it, Yes, right? it was first time launched so in 2018. Months. Just a small background is that it's very much similar which was done recently in the Middle East in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, like a legal and regulatory uh, financial enclave, uh, uh, which is based on English common law jurisdiction. But what we decided is that if we're going to build the regional financial hub, so there is no, uh, uh, it shouldn't be just like a traditional hub, which was uh, countries built in the 80s and 90s with just traditional financial industries, like banking, insurance, and every, uh, capital markets. But it should be something new. And we create like a holistic ecosystem, which consists from two ecosystems, after, from two subsystems. It's one is a traditional uh, financial institution. The other one is a so-called uh, uh, startups community, is a tech community, which is a new co uh, companies, which are building the new technologies. And we also have a special regulatory authorities, and we have a so-called uh, sandbox mechanism, which is allowed to test for regulation authorities, the new technologies, just to build the new risk models. So the idea again to connect this like a west uh, in east coast in Soviet, in United States. So something like this we we trying to do in AAFC. Well, first of all, congratulations on your partnership with the WEF. Uh, that's great. And we also understand why you were running late and why you're sitting on the fourth industrial revolution uh, panel. Um, let me ask you, um, how easy or difficult is it to attract uh, foreign um, you know, companies to set up also in the Astana Financial Center? And uh, are you planning to ease regulations to attract more foreign capital and investments? Yeah. I think, we are, first of all, we have a special legal and regulatory regime. In order to protect this regime, it was even amendments to the Constitution of Kazakhstan, which is allowed to create in the city of North Sultan special enclave. So it means that we, uh, we study the best practice, we study the best regulation practice globally. We've seen what was done in London, Singapore, Dubai, Hong Kong. And we choose the, the best uh, chapters of this legislation for the financial uh, institutions. Uh, but our uh, financial center is not only for the financial institutions, it's also for, for the other tech companies, which we are uh, providing them particularly tax uh, preferences. And uh, so in order to protect any kind of investment, we also uh, create this uh, system of the dispute resolution authorities, which consists from the independent court and international arbitration center. So it means whatever happened uh, with the business uh, uh, in Kazakhstan, we will protect any kind of deals and transactions through these dispute resolution authorities. We will regulate if needed, if regulation needed. Uh, uh, we will regulate the uh, financial institutions, again, based on best practice in Singapore and in London. And we will provide opportunities to be uh, uh, capitalized, to be funded through uh, different mechanisms. One is the capital markets. We create new stock exchange uh, jointly with NASDAQ and Shanghai Stock Exchange. So it's a big uh, hub for the capital markets. And the second is a, is a uh, uh, direct investment, which is, again, we opening the opportunities to invest to Kazakhstan, but through Kazakhstan to entire Central Asia. And the recent news in Central Asia is a opening up economy in Uzbekistan, which is opening the market 55 million people. In the next 15 years, it will be around uh, 100 million people. Now, Hans Schwab here to my right. He's uh, the CEO of Origin All. Actually, I need to ask you also, are you related to Klaus Schwab, the web founder? Yes, I am. Nephew. How? Nephew. Wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations. I don't know if you had any... Uh, uh, Born into in it. I didn't do anything. ...with uh, Astana Financial Center, but... <coughs> You don't look very similar, Hans. Um, so um, uh, that sounds all very good, the initiative of the Astana Financial Center. Uh, but from your legal um, regulatory perspective, uh, is enough being done? Or could you maybe give some more advice to uh, Kairat over there? No, I wouldn't dare giving him advice. I think that would be a little bit... Uh, <laughs> but some tips, maybe. But, um, we can always improve. Uh, but no, but it's, uh, for me, legislation is absolutely key. 
Um, we just need to decide in this new world where does the legislation start and where does it end. Uh, Overregulation has been such and, a headache and, since the global financial crisis. Exactly, and 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 learning from the past. If we look at, uh, if we look again, I keep bringing it back to my my expertise, which is the anti counterfeiting. What was one of the big issues there is that governments did implement legislation, but then they went all the way to actually imposing and choosing particular security solutions or benefiting a single uh, solution on an industry sector, inheritantly, that brings in corruption to the country. So what you're doing is you're trying to address illicit trade with illicit practices, and I think these are opportunities that can be avoided in the future. By no means can I say or would I say that legislation is not important. There is just, there is a point where legislation needs to end and where the dialogue with the private sector needs to begin, which in this particular case, was just not the, was not just the case, not only in the region but ac across the world. Shekep, as you are about to enter that region, the Caspian uh, region, have you been worried about corruption? Have you been encountering corruption? Or, uh, how did you deal with this, or has it not come to your mind at all? You're just doing business. Um, well, we are pretty technology driven. It means by the end of the day, we need a trustable partner in the market that we rely on them. And um, since we built what, whatever new market we enter, we build it on a small scale. And uh, we are not worried. I mean, we are always talking about uh, young people um, driving the economy. I'm sitting here. Hopefully we create something that will disrupt the world. For us, the fourth um, revolution in industries is disrupting of whatever is well established. And hopefully we create efficiencies and all together. Kairat. Yeah, yeah, I just would like it in terms of uh, regulation. So we, are kind of, uh, so we now have a big uh, kind of uh, world which is uh, influenced from the opinions of the regulation authorities. And uh, so usually there are two types of regulation authorities. One is a business friendly, try and be pro, pro tech or pro business oriented. Uh, and just trying to test the new technologies. So in past, usually regulators are prohibiting everything, or at least they are left behind the, the growth of the technologies. I think the kind of the gold middle, uh, uh, the, the truth in a gold middle. So you should just realize that from one side, uh, you should not stop the new businesses to come. From the other side, you should protect the uh, consumers or markets from any type of risk which the new technologies can bring from whatever point of view. It can be ethic point of view, it can be financial risk point of view, so many stuff like this. In terms of the fighting corruptions, I also would like to say that the entire topic of digital economy or digital government services, e-government, with the idea is protect and to create like a Chinese wall between the bureaucracy and between the, the people. And I think that we should move towards this direction, different like, a, for example, blockchain enabled technologies allow us really to, to, to double check that we are avoiding corruption risk as well. Uh, talking about the Gulf uh, Arab region, um, the UAE, for example, has uh, been really pushing, um, the economy minister uh, Sultan al Mansur has been pushing for more investments in Kazakhstan, for example, a lot. Um, uh, from a Saudi perspective, uh, Dr. Al Farhan, um, uh, how would you imagine or you know, like to work together with an authority like uh, the Astana Financial Center in the future? Like, on a practical level, how would you dream of? doing that? It's, it's very simple. I, if I'm allowed to quote uh, Klaus Schwab when he said this is a global collaboration. Nowadays with the digital age and digital economy, it's a cross border. That means there is no dist dif difference between Caspian region, Gulf region, Latin America, Europe. Okay, the problem is when you over-regulate yourself and then you are paralyzed, number one. Number two, when you abuse the regulation in order to present some criminal activities to cover it with the, like digital currency or anything, this is very dangerous, as he mentioned earlier. The point here is when you try to do this digital economy or digital currency, you have to link it with something to prove that it is legitimate, not something coming from corruption, money laundering, 
or any other uh, criminal activities. So that's why this is one of the challenges that will face this industry in the future. And that we will see after implementation, right? I would like to give uh, 15 minutes uh, to the floor now for a short uh, Q&A. So please uh, raise your hand, say your name, the organization and company you work for. Who would like to go for first? Fourth Industrial Revolution, technology, AI, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, Caspian region, before we go for drinks. Or before we get a question, maybe some final remarks or statement or hopes for 2020 and beyond for the fourth industrial revolution from the panel. Yeah, I think uh, back to the idea of uh, to have affiliate center of the World Economic Forum. So uh, first of all, it will be established uh, this year in Kazakhstan, and uh, it's not only for Kazakhstan. And if uh, it's uh, for entire region, so I invite all the countries, all the uh, potential uh, partners of uh, our program uh, to be uh, in touch with us, uh, with Astana International Financial Center. I think uh, we together can really think uh, uh, what we can make in the region and how we should bring holistically region to the, to the new trends. And number two is that uh, it's not just like uh, driven by the government or the quasi-government sector in Kazakhstan, it's also public-private uh, partnership. So first of all, we're working uh, very close with uh, our industrial conglomerates, with uh, SMEs, and I think that this is v would be very useful, really, to, uh, to be together with the business community in terms of the further digitalization of our country. Dr. Alfahan? It's very simple. You see, this kind of gathering, this is to bring the fruit of the collaboration and to bring uh, hope for the future for this industry. As long as it's something to work uh, together as a team with a good faith, away from any kind of negative, false information or things, the opposite. No one will invest heavily in this kind of activities with the potential to do something uh, legitimate. It's the opposite. You look for a future for your new generation. A final statement from your end as well about your uh, hopes and dreams in the Caspian region because you're just about as a Swiss company uh, to enter that part of the world and I'm sure you have uh, big hopes. Um, well, uh, we are actually pretty open what comes. Uh, probably we will be surprised in the beginning but I guess we will find the right partners to increase our businesses also in this region. I am uh, pretty opportunistic. Um, long term, as uh, my colleague said, uh, it's a cooperation and collaboration between all countries to manage that uh, amount of complexity that's coming up in the industries. Hans, a final uh, remark? Uh, well, for me, it's uh, the new technologies that we have today and that emerged over the last uh, um, half a decade, I would say. They allow economies to substantially increase their national revenues while protecting citizens and building better environments for their citizens. I always say you can make it as complicated or you can make it as simple as you want. I'm more in favor of the simple one and I really hope that the region will embrace that these technologies exist and can have a substantial impact now. I'll scan the room a last time. Is there any question for the panel or would you like to wrap up and go for drinks? I think that is the case. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. Thank you.